All right, welcome back to Way of the Wrench. Today we're gonna to start laying out and cutting the sides of our arcade cabinet and we're gonna start constructing this thing. So let's get to it. First time looking at it, it, it looks pretty cool. It looks quite big, uh, just like in the arcade. Uh, so the outer profile is all done. I decided to use this one edge as a reference. The bottom wasn't very square though, so I used a big carpenter square to square that off and then went from there for all the points. So the next thing is I'm drawing in all our radiuses for our curved corners that we're gonna do. So all you need is a little math geometry set here with the compass and uh, set it and, and do that. So we're gonna do that right now. Okay, now that we've got this all laid out, we have to make a decision on how we're gonna cut this out. Um, ideally, you've got a lot of straight cuts here, so whatever tool can get you the nicest, straightest cut. So if you've got someone to help you, probably, and you have a table saw, the best bet would be to rip this up the entire length. And then after that, you've got to do some smaller cuts that may not fit on your table saw. So you've got two choices. You've got a circular saw here, uh, a little bit harder to use. You might want to set up some guides and clamp them so you can make nice straight cuts. Or you can do something where you do kind of like tilt it up like this and line it up and do a kind of a plunge cut as you go down and then make your cut. Uh, con with this, it doesn't do radiuses. So on these radius corners and things like that, we're going to have an issue. And you can't go completely right into the corners here. You can only get close and then you'll have to finish that with some kind of handsaw. Now the other choice you've got is a jigsaw, uh, otherwise known as a saber saw. This thing will cut anything, straight cuts and, and tight curves, um, but you have to be careful. If you go too quick with it, this blade tends to flex a bit and you end up with not a straight 90 degree cut. Um, so it's really your choice, whatever you can do. I think I'm probably gonna try this uh, jigsaw do a couple test cuts on some scrap MDF and see if it's straight enough for me. And if it is, then I will probably tackle this uh, myself.
one side cut out. I'm pretty stoked about this. Uh, it's starting to look like an actual arcade cabinet, so it's pretty sick. Uh, now, nothing's perfect here. It's very, very close. And what I did is I cut just outside of my pencil line, so now I have something to refer to when I'm sanding it down. And I'm just gonna basically sand all these edges, make sure all these nice corners are all nice and smooth, and uh, then we'll get on to the next piece. So, I'll probably fast forward this part. It's gonna be pretty boring for you. All right, it's next day in the shop here. Uh, we have a finished side now that's completely sanded and smooth, and I was really quite happy how the jigsaw cut the edges at a 90 degree angle, sanded out nicely. So now that we have one uh, finished, we are gonna use this as a template. I'm gonna lay it out onto another fresh piece of uh, MDF, a little bit of overhang, about a couple mil or one eighth of an inch on the straight edge and on the bottom. And then I'm going to drill and screw in a couple hole uh, screws in here so that I can keep these from moving. And I'm gonna trace out with a pencil and I'm gonna take it apart and cut it with about an eighth of an inch overlap with a jigsaw and then the rest will do with a uh, router with a trim flush router bit. So let's get started. So now we're going to switch up to the router. I've got my pre-cut jigsaw piece sticking out about an eighth of an inch past the line. And then I'm going to have to flip this over because the side that I sanded in is my template needs to follow along this ball bearing so that it just follows along that. And then the idea behind a trim flush bit is this side is exactly the same diameter as this ball bearing. So whatever that template is, it'll cut the second piece. So I've set this just a touch past 5 eighths thick so that the bigger piece will get trimmed down to whatever the other one is. So let's do that now.
All right, there we go. We've got two exact copies. Now, there's always going to be a little bit, and I'm super picky with this kind of stuff. I can kind of feel <laughs> five, six, seven thousandths of an inch. Uh, pretty accurate fingers. Uh, I'm going to sand that so they're completely the same all the way around. And I'm only going to show you a couple seconds. Fast forward it so you get the idea, but I'm just trying to make it so that they're exactly the same. Key thing is um, that they're the same so that when I go to lay out where the battens should be, that they will both be exactly the same and then we won't have any issues with it being not square. All right, next day in the shop, uh, today we're gonna cut up some blue blocks or some battens uh, out of a two by four. Now, once again, you could buy this one inch by one inch material at your um, home hardware or your lumber store, but um, you can pick up an eight foot two by four for like $4. So I've got all the equipment here, I'm gonna clean it up. And I thought what I would do is I'm very quickly gonna show you a little more in depth on how I'm doing this just for the one part and then um, I'm not actually going to show you all of the work for the battens all at once. Um, that way I can keep this video down short, short and sweet. This guy here is called the jointer. It's used for making flat surfaces and nice and square surfaces. Uh, then you can continue on with other machines when you got those nice clean surfaces. So it's basically got a blade down in here and we've got a very an in-feed table and an out-feed table and it's designed so that once you take your cut the out-feed table should be exactly where the surface where the uh, material has been cut so that it stays nice and flat as you go through it. Now you've also got a fence here that should be set to 90 degrees so that when you take your nice flat clean surface put it up against the fence and take another edge here uh, and trim it down and end up with a nice flat 90 degree surface that you can work with after you're done the machine. So one of the things that you do here is you take your flat surface, usually you go for the biggest one first. And what I like to do is take some pencil and go across it like this, all the way across. And that way you know when uh, you're done because all of this will be completely clean and you can check it on the table to make sure it's flat. So when I pulled this cover back here, you can see the, these blades here. You are not getting your fingers anywhere near there. So you make sure that your guard works and spring load comes back. And uh, you never put your hands over the blade. So as you're feeding this material through, it'll, you see it pushes the guard out of the way and it'll start cutting. So um, you don't keep your hands here and go over the top. You use a push stick. Make sure it's got a little hook on the back right here so that you can catch the end of the wood and push it all the way through without having your hands anywhere near there. Now, if this is adjusted improperly and it goes to stick on the outfield table, all you do is you hold your wood there, shut off the machine until it comes to a complete stop before you take this out. Do not reach your fingers over to the front edge and bring that back. That's like instant like, hello, got no fingertips. mark all the pencil marks are gone on the entire surface so now I can flip it over and pick one of these sides I'm gonna pick this one here do the same thing with the pencil trick make sure that all of that pencil disappears so now I'm going to take my nice trued up edge here that I just did and I'm going to mark it with any kind of mark you really want just to make sure that you know which side is the nice surface See that there's still a little bit of pencil. Some of it's cleared out in the center though. So we gotta keep going. Here, so we'll just mark those. Now we now have a two-sided.
straight edges, 90 degrees, and cleaned up. So now we're done with the planer. Now, I've marked this entire surface with pencil and the 90 degree edge that I'm going to clean up with some pencil here. You can see that. And um, so when that pencil is gone, I know the surface is cleaned up. And when this is cleaned up, I'll know it's 90 degrees true. Now, one thing to note that um, wood has grain to it. So you see these little, these lines here, those are the grain. So what you want to try to do is read which way the grain goes and you want to cut with the grain, not against the grain. If you cut against the grain, the direction of the cutter will actually chip up and rip up the surface of the wood rather than cutting it nice. This machine here is our planer, and we're gonna use it to clean up the other side of the surface. So we have our nice cleaned up and flat surface from our jointer. The idea of the planer is that we're gonna do this other side and clean it up and make these two nice and flat and parallel together. So uh, really easy machine to use. Don't put your fingers inside here. Watch your fingers that they don't get pinched in between the wood and the table because when this starts to feed, it slaps it down pretty hard, give you a nice nasty pinch. Um, the, the length of your material that goes through here has to be the minimum distance between these two bolts here which are the adjustment for your drive rollers it's usually about 12 to 14 inches and um, obviously this is longer so we're going to be okay now uh, grain direction is still going to be an issue here so watch where your grain is and if you run it through the machine on your first trial cut and the surface looks horrible and jagged and torn up uh, chances are you're going to have to flip the material around to get a smoother finish on it. Other than that, you basically um, set the machine with it off, take your drive wheel or your roller here, uh, open it up, get the wood to be able to go in with the machine off, and then roll up on this wheel until it starts to pinch and want to try to drive. Once it's tight, I would back that off one turn, take the wood out, and then you can go back to that setting for your initial cut. All right, and obviously your f flat, clean finish goes to the bottom, bottom on the table here.
So next up is putting the little slotting cutter in our router and um, we have a test piece that we're going to get set up here so that it is exactly in the center of our 5 8 thick panel. Uh, that way if we screw it up or if we have to make some slight adjustments we can just throw that piece in the garbage and um, our arcade left and right cabinet sides will be perfect. So uh, that's what we're going to do right now. So with this right centered now in my scrap piece, I'm ready to go, this is set. Uh, the next thing, real quick to talk about, whenever you're doing any kind of hand routering, you wanna figure out the direction of the cutter, it's usually clockwise, and um, one little tip is when you're using the router, try to go in the direction that the cutter has to go into the wood and push the wood away. If you go the other way, um, I don't know what they call it in woodworking, but in metalworking they can call it climb milling, where the cutter actually grabs the material and tries to scoot the tool forward. And on a hand router, this can make this thing skip or go a little bit out of control. So if you go cross milling, which like I said, I don't know what the term is for woodworking, but basically you're putting the cutter into the direction of the wood that you're feeding it in, uh, you'll have way more control on it. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna speed this part up. These turned out awesome. Uh, do a little bit of cleanup here and then we're gonna move on to um, starting to brad nail and glue down our glue blocks. So I've now laid out all of our glue blocks or battens where they're supposed to go, trim down whatever needed to fit our, our cabinet here. So I'm getting ready to um, glue and brad nail those in uh, with one of these air operated brad nailers. So um, you don't need it, but this makes the job a lot easier. Um, basically we're just holding these glue blocks in place with nails until the glue dries, which makes this thing hard as nails. Uh, so, uh, what I recommend is you get some scrap MDF, scrap uh, battens that you've made, and do a test so that you don't drive nails all the way through or not have them stick in enough, uh, etc. So, set yourself up, scrap these, do a nail, and then Basically, this is the size nail that I'm putting in. So I can tell that it's below the surface about a millimeter or two. And so literally that means I'm almost all the way through the MDF. And in this case, um, 
They do have actually just a little bit of breakthrough um, coming through the side. So I'm gonna sand that. Uh, I might even just back off on my brad nailer because I can adjust how far that goes in. All right, so on my brad nailer, there's a little screw right here and there's actually a little graphic of how far the nail sticks in or sticks out. So it tells you which direction to go. Uh, so I've just backed it off until I have um, no until I have no bump coming out the back here uh, and I'm set perfect. So basically the process is you take your batten after you fit it, you're gonna put some white wood glue uh, all the way across here. Uh, if you put too much, not a big deal, you can always wipe it up and I highly recommend you do that uh, before it dries. Uh, if you put too little, you can starve the, the glue joint and uh, basically it doesn't stick very well. So make sure you have enough glue there uh, and then you're gonna line it up in place next to your lines that we pre-drew on our cabinet and we're going to brad nail those in. So I'll show you one uh, at one time and then I'll speed up the rest. So if you are doing this process and you're noticing that the wood is not staying put, even though you've set it, nothing's changed, uh, time to check and see if you've got any nails because you've run out of brad nails. So uh, I gotta stop and put some more in before we continue here. There we go, back in business. So there's one side done and completely. Uh, the bigger bottom brace and the shelf brace, I'm gonna drill and put some screws in uh, every couple of inches or so so make sure that those areas are nice and strong since the bottom is holding up the whole cabinet. And I'm just gonna do that before continuing on and doing the same thing on the second side which I may or may not show. got one done now I'm uh, gonna move on to the second one and we'll speed this up even quicker I may not even show it we'll see
Okay, another step finished. We're done the battens now, and we are on to putting in all these pieces between the left and right of the cabinets. So uh, this is starting to come along, and it's looking amazing, and I uh, can't wait to keep going. We got this thing together, kind of, somewhat. Uh, basic, basic skeleton of it. And uh, next thing up is going to be putting on our caster wheels here. Um, I picked these guys up. I've got them set up at the depth here. They're just poking out about, I don't know, quarter inch, three eighths from the bottom. So you won't really see them. Um, so that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, so what I've done here is I've got two of the straight casters that don't have any turning on it. Because I've designed this thing to go through sideways, through doorways, um, I've got to put these on one side so that we can basically tilt it down and go through or just roll it through sideways. So I'm going to put the two straight ones like this. On the two other sides, I've got some swivel casters 
and uh, it's got a lock on it as well so once I get it in a position somewhere I can actually lock it down. come along it's been a long time thinking about this thing and uh, man this thing is starting to move around and everything so I've got the casters on it now so I can move it around sideways and uh, get this through doorways and things like that so um, next step is basically going through and individually putting all the different panels and the little detail work that is needed for each of them so this control panel backing plates gonna need holes for the wires HDMI and audio and power to get through uh, TV monitor bezel is going to have to be cut out for that and routed. Uh, the speaker shelf is going to have to have obviously two holes for some speakers. Uh, digital marquee, much the same as the other monitor, it needs to get cut out for the um, display. And the back, I'm going to be doing something different with the back. I am going to put in the whole piece, figure out where the shelves and where I want to make two separate kind of doors that open up here. And I'm going to try something different that I learned on the net. Uh, I'm going to basically cut a hole, or not cut a hole, cut a, a slit on the table saw. Then I'm going to mount the hinges, and then I will finish cutting out the doorway. I've seen this um, done online, and it looked like a pretty slick way of doing it, rather than trying to orient your hinges and stuff like that after. So I'm going to try that with this. And then, uh, man, we're getting close to being done for this video anyway. Um, so let's get going.